Uwoma Dene Fechelubi. I'm the founder of Belmont Cakes and Ugo and Potter Cuts. Um, you always have to look within. What do you like? What are you good at? What gets you excited? You know, these are um, a few things that will guide you to make that choice. Then I always encourage people to open up to learning, go for courses. You can never tell what you love to do if you haven't been exposed to it. So it's important for you to keep learning till you find that thing that um, you really want to do. Never stop learning. The day you, start le um, you stop learning, you start to die. Don't ever feel too big to learn. Don't ever think that you know it all because the truth is that you can learn from people who are even younger than you. And the more you expose yourself to knowledge, the more attractive you will be in the labor market. People will want you even as a business person or as you know, somebody that wants to be employed. So really, learning is key. So um, today I'm here to talk to you about business because that's what I'm about. For over 19 years, I've been into business and I find comfort and joy in doing business. So I would like to ask, do we have business people here? Oh, great. Um, the first thing you need to know, or the first question you need to answer before you get into any business venture is why. Why do you want to do business? If your reason for getting into business is wrong, it may not work. For some people, they want to get into business because um, they like the sound of CEO. They want to be called CEO. I don't think that's a good reason to you know, get into business. For some other people, um, they don't want to call anybody sir or man. It's, it's a crazy idea because if that's why you want to get into business, you're going to be in for a shock. I run a cake business and I have a lot of young people coming in to order cakes. And as long as I'm attending to them, I address them as sir or ma'am, whether I'm older than them or not. So if your reason for getting into business is to avoid calling people sir or ma'am, then you are in for a shock. Okay, so um, yeah, and I have seen a book I haven't read the book, so I'm not judging the book, but the title got me a little bit worried. I once saw a book that said, Sack Your Boss. So I know there are people that may want to get into business because they're already tired of, you know, where they are working and they want to sack their bosses and start up. These are wrong reasons to get into business because um, it will try. You're going in for something major and your reason is not deep enough. So let's look at the right reasons for getting into business. For me, um, I got I started baking because I ate a piece of cake that was so delicious. It was the best I had ever had. I had never had anything like that. And I ate it. It was different. I experienced bliss. And at that point, I knew I wanted the people around me to experience the same thing. I grew up in a university environment. I grew up in UNN. And at that time in Osaka, there was nothing like good cakes. You know, you eat a cake, it's dry, it's hard, and somebody came into town and gave me a piece of cake, and it was absolutely delicious, it was different. And at that spot, I knew I wanted to learn how to bake, not just for myself, but for the people around me. And um, I've been baking for about 19 years now, and it's still my reason I derive so much joy when customers pick up their cakes and they're excited or they eat it and they have wonderful things to say about the cakes. One, it brings happiness to them, it brings happiness to homes, it brings happiness to friends, and it builds friendships. Yeah, I think I want it because of what I'm holding in my hand. Okay, so we're going to look at how to choose the right business. Um, you want to do business. The 
There are so many businesses to do. You must um, be sure that you are going into the right business, suitable for you. So how do you know um, the type of business that you will thrive in? Think about the things you like. Think about the things you are good at. Think about the things you can learn really fast because um, sometimes you may actually not know what you like till you are exposed to it. So in my first year um, in the university, we had a one year strike. Are there students here? So you're experiencing your hopefully not a one year strike. But we had a one year strike. And I didn't want to um, stay at home idle. I wanted to learn something new. And at that point, I wanted to learn how to sew. So I, my parents enrolled me in a place. I was really excited about it. But a few weeks down the line, I got tired. It became stressful to go for classes. And then I would come home, because there was a sewing machine at home, so I was also practicing at home. I would come home, and my siblings would line up with their clothes for amendments. I, I didn't find that funny, you know, but if it was something I was really excited about, maybe, just maybe I would have been excited to keep on amending clothes. So after some time, I, I, re I realized that sewing wasn't for me. You know, but you still have to, it's good to expose yourself to knowledge. You can never tell which one will work. So I, I actually made some money from um, sewing. I, I remember I made an outfit for my cousin for a wedding at that time. But honestly, I'm not sure I still know how to sew. But it was a good thing that I made good use of that time, tried out something that didn't work for me. So I put, I struck that off the list. I have always been business inclined. I have sold perfumes. I have sold wristbands, you know, um, to students. It, it just gives me joy. I love to make money. For students, I don't know if you're in school fellowships. I was in a school fellowship and I was also a staff kid. So I was going to school from home, meaning that I didn't have access to a lot of money. I always had enough for my transportation, for my food. I didn't have extra cash to pay for things in fellowship. Because in fellowship, um, there will always be something to buy. Maybe the microphone is bad or something, you have to contribute. So as a student, I really wanted to you know, make some money to be able to contribute for such things. So from an early stage, I already knew that I was business inclined. So now, we're going to look at um, learning. Okay, let me continue with learning. After my um, university, after my, what's it called? The last, my last exam before youth service, I enrolled in a French school. I wanted to learn French because I didn't want to be idle. And in one of our assignments, we were asked to translate our evil names. My name is Owoma. I did the assignment and it was translated as Bell, Mon. Owa means world. Oma means beautiful. So Bell, Mon, beautiful world. And that was where my business name came from. So what am I trying to say? Just keep learning. You can never tell when, what you're doing now, what you're learning now will take you to. Maybe if I didn't enroll for that French class, the name could have been something else. In school, my nickname was the Cape Princess. So maybe I would have gone ahead with the Cape Princess. But today it's Belmont because I did a little bit of French and I was excited about the name Belmont and it became a business. And so I'm just trying to encourage everybody here, especially students, this is a blessing for you. I know that you really want to go back to school, but this try period is a blessing for you. You need to explore. And even if you don't um, want to go somewhere for a physical class, there's so many online classes that you can enroll in. 
just to discover yourself. You can't lock yourself up in a room and realize that, oh, you love to make, or you love to make clothes. You just need to keep, you know, trying out things till you find that thing that you really want to do for a long time. And for those that have found what they want to do, you have to continue learning. The moment you stop learning, you start to die. I'm in a fast-paced um, industry. The cake industry is so fast that today it's this, tomorrow it's something else, next tomorrow it's also. If you feel you already know it all and you're just in your little space doing what you have always known how to do, your business will fold up one day because you won't be able to um, impress your customers. Younger people are coming out every day. There are times I have to go and learn from people that have been in business for just two years. That's where humility comes in. Don't ever feel that you know you are high up there and you can't learn from somebody that started yesterday. There's always something new from the younger ones, the Gen Z um, community. They always have something spicy to add. So if you want to keep being relevant, you have to go to other people, people who are younger than you, who are old, people who know how to do something you don't know how to do and learn, okay? So, um, let me tell you a bit about how I got into business, like business, business. Um, I wanted to study pharmacy and I didn't gain admission into pharmacy. I gained admission to study botany, but the plan was to change to pharmacy after one year. So that meant I had to do really good in my first year. My GP had to be really high so that I'll be able to change to pharmacy easily. But um, I got into school. I was so excited about school fellowships. I was attending every school fellowship program, abiding work. You would see me there, Dominion City, you would see me there. You know, I was really excited about school fellowship, and I guess I got distracted. And at the end of my first year, I failed months 111 and 112, and there were very important courses that I needed to be able to change to pharmacy. At that point, it felt like the end of the world for me, and, um, you know, I couldn't change to pharmacy. I ended up in nutrition and dietetics, which I still thank God that I, uh, I studied. When I changed to nutrition and dietetics, the people around me, my friends, were laughing at me because they said I was in school to study how to cook and bake, which wasn't true, but well, I had to live with it. So when I had an opportunity to learn how to bake, which was about the time I was changing to nutrition and dietetics, I said, okay, see, they're laughing that I'm in school to learn how to bake and cook. I can also learn how to bake very well and sell the cakes to them. Let me make money out of this thing that they are laughing about. And that was how I, you know, learned how to be. Pharmacy, why did I want to study pharmacy? Because I grew up in a university environment. Pharmacy students are always on point. They always look good, you know, skirts, shirts, shoes, all like the other students that can wear jeans and t-shirts. So I found that really attractive. It was a wrong reason. And if I ended up studying pharmacy, maybe I would be happy to be. I'm not sure. Maybe I would be happy to be. So as a student, even if you are in a course or you're studying a course that you're not excited about, it's okay. Study it and study it well. You're already studying the course. You need your good grades. But you can start now to learn something by the side so that if you're done with school and you really don't want to continue with what you studied, you have something that you can start working on. I studied nutrition and dietetics. It's, a med it's more of a medical course than cooking and baking, which people think it is. But I'm a baker. Um, I love to bake. I run a bakery, and that's what I'm doing now. And I'm not practicing anything I studied in school. So what I'm trying to say is that whatever it is, wherever you find yourself, you have to 
do the best that you can do. Your parents are spending money to send you to school. Some people will say, after all, I'm not interested in this course. Let me just, you know, finish and do what I really want to do. Should put in some effort to make good grades. Put in some effort to make good grades, you know. Um, it's not easy to pay school fees, so you owe that to your parents. So even if you want to do business or you have already started doing business, you must be focused as a student. That is the primary reason why you are in school. So my first year was horrible. At the end of my first year, my GP was a pass. And in my second year, I started baking. My parents were worried because if my GP was a pass, pass is lower than a third class, okay? So if my GP was a pass in first year and I was studying fully, what would it now be when I'm trying to do business and study at the same time? I assured them that it wasn't going to be a problem. Doing business in school actually made me more responsible. I had to make good grades. And by the time, I think it was my, yeah, it was the last semester of my final year that I got into a 2 one. All through, and from that class, I moved to a 2-2. But because I was focused, I was calculating it every single day. Like, I was calculating it and working towards it. And by the end of my second semester, fourth year, I, I think it was a 3.72, and that was a 2-1. So I'm just trying to say that, be the best version of you everywhere. In school, as a business owner, as um, anything, a dancer, whatever it is that you love to do, just bring out the best in that thing. Okay? So after school, um, I moved on to do my youth service. I was baking as a copper. And during, um, what is it called again? I can't remember. CDS. CDS, the Thursday CDS. I would go with cakes and I was marketing it. Like my life depended on it. So anytime you see me, what you hear from me is beautiful cakes for beautiful people. And at the time I finished my NYC, I was, I made a lot of money. I was going to banks, selling to bankers. You know, it just, it just made me realize that, okay, if I was able to do this as a copper, if I put in some structure around this, I can actually grow this business. I had to come back to where for my internship. Please, can I get water? Excuse me. Thank you. Okay, so I came back to do my internship because my parents insisted that I was going to finish, but I had started. Um, as an intern, I was also baking and baking more. The internship made me believe and see that I was called to do business because all through my one year in UNTH, I was frustrated. I was just waiting for it to end. After that, what did I do? Did I start up a cake business, a proper cake business? No. I wanted to do things right. I believe in learning and doing things well. I don't know if you're evil, but some people believe in Iwate Henanya. I don't know how to do that. I will always learn and try to do it. I don't believe in Iwate Henanya. So I moved to Lagos. I, um, I signed up for a business course with Faith Foundation. And what they do in Faith Foundation, which is fantastic, is that they place you under a mentor, somebody already successful in your line of business. So for three months, I was in Lagos um, going for the business um, courses, and I was also attached to a mentor. So I had meetings with her, not necessarily to teach me how to bake or anything, but just to learn about business, you know. And it was an opportunity to see that 
cake business, which was absolutely nothing in any room but in the East at that time, can be big business. So mentorship, there's a place for mentorship. There are people that are already um, doing so well in your line of business. Try to understudy them. Try to learn from them. And when you go in as a mentee, you have to behave yourself because um, some people go in, you know, I said, I didn't go there to learn how to be. Some people go in and they just, they have a sense of entitlement. You want to know the person's trade secrets. You want to know things that shouldn't be your business. If you go in as a mentee, do more of listening than talking. Allow the mentor to lead the way and you will be amazed at the things you will learn. So I had a beautiful relationship with my mentor and um, she offered a partnership arrangement with me. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay, so it was scary, but I remember what I learned in the business school. It's better to be a part owner of a billion dollar business than to be a 20% or a 100% owner for, of a 500,000 naira business. So it made sense for me to get into that partnership. I prayed about it, I talked to some people, and I got into a partnership with my mentor and her already existing partner in Abuja. So the idea was to partner and start up the open cake craft in Enugu instead of Belmont Cakes, which was the plan initially. So I made a mistake, a big mistake at that point. I was young. I was naive, I was excited. At that point, I should have involved the lawyer because you don't um, get into partnerships verbally. It has to be written down, it has to be signed. And whatever it's written down, you have to read it and give it to the lawyer to read through so that you don't shoot yourself in the leg. But my mentor kept on saying, um, the lawyer is not around at the moment, let's just start and later we'll sort that out. I was really young and I was excited about this big move. So I got into this partnership. The partnership lasted for about five years. The agreement was that we were going to have an equal partnership. And um, some years down the line, I don't know if, you know, there was a mix up, but my partner said it was 40, 40, 40, 20. I'm so sorry, I need to take water, I don't know what. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. So um, she said it was a 40, 40, 20 arrangement, meaning that she had 40%. The person in Abuja had 40% and had 20%. And honestly, if that was what we agreed on, I would have continued with it. But that wasn't what we agreed on. The only reason it didn't happen this way was that it was a third party. So the person in Abuja said, well, I wasn't there when you had the agreement, but what was reported to me after you made the agreement was that it was an equal partnership. So that was what settled it. But at that point, we had to dissolve the partnership. So we dissolved the partnership and we all went our separate ways. So that was when I now launched Belmont Kicks. So do not be in a hurry to get into partnerships. I still believe very much in partnerships. Partnerships can be amazing, but all the terms and conditions must be written out, everybody must understand it, and it must be signed. Don't get excited about the money that will be pumped into the business. For me, because I was fresh out of school, I didn't have money at all. I didn't have to bring one naira. I was bringing in sweat capital. I knew my audience. I was really into business. I was going to push it, but I wasn't bringing in money. 
So I felt the equal partnership at that time was a great deal. I wasn't bringing in money, but the money was being paid back to the people that brought in the money from the business. If I knew better, maybe I would have been treated better. If I knew better, definitely we would have had everything written down so that years down the line, nobody would say, no, I thought it was this or I thought it was that. So before, if you have a business idea, there are times when people will say, ah, that's a really good idea. I can um, invest so, so, so amount so that we can partner. You know, at that time, you may not have money and you'll get excited. Just be careful. Be sure of what you're doing. Always involve a lawyer to read through the lines before you sign anything. Because you can sign your life away without knowing what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, another thing you have to, um, you must do as a business person is to separate yourself from your business. I also made that mistake when I started. So, my personal line was also my business line. So, I would give out my personal line, put it up on Google, on all the social media handles. That way you cannot have a line. Because by 12 a.m., you will find people calling you to place an order for a key. And when you don't answer, the next day they are upset that they called and you did not answer. So from the beginning, when you're starting, you feel it's not a big deal. I don't have too many orders. But remember that you're growing. So from the beginning, you need to make it clear that this is Uwama and this is Belmont Kicks. Belmont has its own life and I have my own life so that you don't break down. It's not something you, I'm still finding it difficult now because I didn't, I didn't start this on time. So my personal number is still all over and I have people calling me at odd hours. Even when I'm off, off work, I have people calling me. But if I had done the right things from the beginning, it wouldn't have been so. So if it's going into business, separate yourself from your business. Pay yourself a salary. Don't squander the money you're making from your business. It is not, it's actually not your money. It is, it belongs to the business. The business has a life of its own and needs to grow. And if you keep dipping your hand into the business pocket to take care of your needs, your business will collapse or it, will, it may not collapse, but it will not grow as a shoe. It won't grow as a shoe. So from the beginning, find out um, how much, you know, you, that can sustain you. Decide on something that you pay yourself every month and try as much as possible to stick to it. There may be times when you have an emergency and you have to dig your hand into the business um, account, but it doesn't come all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. Doing it once in a while will not um, make your business collapse, but when you consistently take money from your business to take care of your personal needs, your business cannot grow. You need to think big even when you're small. You need to see the big picture. You need to remember that you have people working with you or people that will eventually work with you. And the truth is that when they see you spending the business money anyhow, they will take you serious. They will never see a future in a company where you know the owner spends money anyhow. So it is important to make it clear that this is you and this is your business. Have a we mentality. You must carry your stuff along. I cringe when I see people um, make posts on maybe Instagram. Let me use, I do cakes, so I'll be using cakes as an example. Imagine me posting a beautiful picture of a cake and the caption will say, um, I made this cake for. It is absolutely wrong. As long as you're working with people, you did not do it alone. I can't honestly remember the last time I made the cake. I cannot remember the last time I decorated the cake. I can say, do this, do that, do that, and I'm expecting. So it's going to be very wrong and very unfair for me to go on our social media platform and say, I did. People who 
will heal you. When your staff are watching, they are also on social media. And when they see their sweat and their blood on your page, and you're saying, I, one day they'll pack up their bags and leave. You have to make them feel like they belong to the system, like they're going with a system. Praise them in house and outside. Talk about how amazing your staff are doing. Because really, without them, your business may not grow as much as you would want it to grow. Second, out for trainings. So, um, we have two merchants, remember I said that. I got married and I had to relocate to Enugu. Sorry, to Port Harcourt. I was living in Enugu. I got married and I had to relocate to Port Harcourt. And if I was um, selfish about teaching my staff, I would have shut down the business to relocate, you know. You need to think global, except you're really okay with doing your thing, it's my business, it's my recipe, I'm not going to teach anybody, then that's fine. But if you want to build a career in business, if you want a business that will grow, a business that can possibly outlive you, you must train the people working with you. Train them to the point that if you're not around, everything works perfectly well, even without you. If you're being selfish about what you know, the day you're not around, your customers can never be satisfied because without you, things will never work the way they should. So as you're growing your business, train your staff. They are an integral part of your business. You cannot do everything. You can't attend to all the customers. You can't um, do the cleaning. You can't um, keep all the records. So you need all these people and you must equip them to be able to function well in your space. Think about it. If you don't train them, you're the one losing out because they cannot function well. They cannot give you 100%. And some people will say, what if I train them and they leave? What if they stay? Why don't you think about the positive part of it? What if they stay? And they are spoiling all the cakes and you know messing things up because they don't know the right things to do. And even if they leave, just take it as an investment in somebody. There are so many people in this world that you know you can make for, you can't possibly make for anybody in any way. I always tell of my staff that our competition in quotes are a blessing to us because if we have to make for the whole Enugu, we will not be able to meet up with the others and people will say we're not serious. So the other people who are bakers are there to do the jobs that we cannot do. So if you can have that mentality, you'll be focused in satisfying your customers and not checking out what the other person is doing. You know, when sometimes when you are busy looking at what the other person is doing, you get into a confused state because today your plan is to do this, then next thing, Baker A is doing another thing, and oh, something comes to you that this is the A thing, this is what I should be doing, and then you leave your plan and you're now trying to live another person's life. You can never grow the business, the successful business that way. Marketing. Marketing is um, an integral part of business. When we started the over at that time in Enugu, we went to all the banks with um, samples of cakes, you know, for them to taste. I was always downstairs, so our office was in a shopping complex, and once I see a car driving in, I'm running downstairs to meet whoever I was. Oh, now, when I look at myself, I wonder where all that courage has gone to. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to me. But back then, I had the energy. I had the zeal. I was ready to talk to anybody about, you know, our product. So whatever it is that you're doing, whatever business, you cannot sell it to another person if you don't believe it. If you don't believe in the product, if you don't believe that what you're selling is fantastic, how then can another person believe that 
what they're selling is good enough for the person to use. So you need to be able to, first of all, make sure your products are good. That is why you must learn, and that's what I am I am. You have to learn and learn it very well and make sure you're doing the right thing. And then you sell, like, the life of the business depends on you selling. You need those orders to come in. You need the money, so you need to talk. There's no place of being shy. You know, I don't know how to talk about my business. If you don't know how to talk about your business, I can afford to pay another person to do it for you. Fantastic. But if there's nobody, if you're just starting out and you don't have somebody that you can pay or you can afford to pay somebody, then be ready. Be ready to talk. Be ready to make people believe in what you are doing. Yeah. So, um, who are your customers? Who are these people you're supposed to market to? The number one customers that you have, if you have people already working with you, are your staff. The same way you believe in your vision, you believe in your product, you have to pass whatever it is on to them. You have to make them believe in that product as much as you do. Because you will not always see the customers. They have to be able to share whatever vision you have with your customers or whatever product you have with them. Then you must treat them well. The same way you want to impress your customers and treat them well. If you don't treat your staff well, there is absolutely no way they will be able to treat your customers well. See your staff as your number one customer. So I'm going to treat these people well so that when the other customers walk in, they'll be happy, happy in-house customers, willing to welcome them and treat them well. So you start from within and then you share the love outside. Customer experience is key. Customer care is amazing you will not always get it right there are times when something may just go wrong and the product is not as good as it was meant to be or to you it's good and the customer is not happy with it don't say that's how they are have done my best no you have to find a way to ensure that the customer is happy so there are times when okay let me use this example on a Sunday, a customer ordered a cake on Friday, and on a Sunday, I got a call, and she was so furious. She said, I asked for two layers of red velvet, two layers of chocolate and one layer of red velvet. I just cut the cake now, and it's two layers of red velvet and one layer of chocolate. She didn't complain about the design. She didn't complain about uh, the taste of the cake. But she got two layers of red velvet instead of two layers of chocolate, and she was upset. I could have easily said, uh, just manage it, it's still the same, they're at the same price, but no, that wasn't what she ordered. I said, okay, no problem, I'm so sorry about this. Send your address, we're going to send a layer of, luckily we had a layer of chocolate. So we, I called the delivery person and sent a layer of chocolate cake to her immediately. Of course it was a loss for us, because we already charged for the cake, she had already paid, and we had to give her an extra cake. But till date, she's still our customer. And she keeps talking about us. She couldn't even believe it when she got the same size of cake, a layer of the same size of cake. You know, so sometimes you lose money to win the hearts of your customers. It's not always Tiwa, Bawa, you know, there are times when you think about how much you've invested in a product and you're thinking about the profit, and uh, the profit is not even so much, so why would I? And you just want to. Look, when you lose one customer, don't look at it as one, you may have lost nine or even more than that. Because they will go about talking about the experience they had with you. So you have to handle them with care. Great care. You know how you feel when you walk into a store and you're treated well by a sales girl? Just think about it and try to replicate that in your business. Try to make your customers feel special because they're actually special. Without them, you don't have a business. The day you stop having customers walk into your store or call you to order for your product, that is the end of your business. So you have to handle them with great care. Even if it's one that you have, handle that person like everything depends on that person. 
Okay, it's really, really important. And when your business grows, there are times when it gets, it gets really overwhelming. I remember when we started, we would always call customers a few days before their birthdays. We had all that, and we'd call and say, hello, your birthday is coming up, this, that, you know. By the time our customer base started to grow, it was impossible. But it's amazing how customers notice these little things. A customer called me one day, and she was upset that I forgot a birthday of her family member, <laughs> you know? Because initially, we would go through the records, call ahead of time, but with growth, it was very difficult to keep up with that. This is just to show you that customers really notice these little things, and they enjoy it. They enjoy the attention, so give it to them and make them feel special. And when you have really grown and you can afford to employ somebody that will handle that aspect, go ahead and do it. You're not wasting money. You are actually investing in keeping your customers within. You're not the only person doing the kind of business you're doing. So we always remember that if you don't um, treat your customers well, you're giving them an opportunity to go and try something else and then you just get a better treatment when they are doing You really don't want them to try somewhere else, so you do what you should do. Excellence in everything you do is important. So, um, last week, I walked into the office and everywhere was scattered. On the counter, there was a pen, there was a stapler, you know, they were just walking in. I felt somehow, and I said to the manager, we are complaining that Buhari is, you know, not governing us well. But what about this little space that God has given us? How well are we doing the things we should do? We have plants outside. The plants were kept there to make our environment beautiful. How often do we water the plants and ensure that they are growing well, they still look beautiful enough to welcome our customers. A customer walks in and you're on the phone and you expect that the customer is, you know, waiting for you to finish your call. They're just little, little things. Look, look at your business as the country, as that country that God has given you and is, you know, watching to see how you will lead. So whatever it is that you feel our governor here is not doing well, or our president is not doing well. Think about your business. Am I doing it well? Before you start criticizing, think about yourself. This one, this little thing that I have, am I doing it well? Or am I just pointing fingers? So it's important for us to be the best versions of ourselves. Excellence, let excellence be our watchword. You may not always get it right, but when you always um, have it somewhere in your mind that you need to do something right. Even in your products, it will show. It will show that you have put in some effort to ensure that you're giving out something good. So, my last word to everybody today is never stop learning. Learn. Keep learning. In business, read books, go for courses. Um, follow the right people on social media, you know, don't waste away your time on, so on social media. There are so many amazing people on so social media that you can learn from without even paying. Just following them and seeing what they're putting out there can help you grow every day. It's important that the day you stop learning is the day you start to die. There's something we say in the office, learn something new every day, even though we don't follow it all the time, or at least when you have that in mind, learn something new every day. You'll be hungry for knowledge. You'll be hungry to get yourself better. And gradually you will um, find yourself being that person, that person that you want to be. We should always have a goal and say, okay, this is, have somebody you look up to and say, this is the kind of person I want to be. So that to guide you in choosing the things to learn, the things to read. If, for example, you have issues with, um, punctuality, you don't keep to time, you know, it's an area to develop on. Don't just learn aimlessly. 
there's an area in your life where you are not so good at. Maybe you're impatient. Take out some time and learn about how to be more patient, how to be more accommodating. And when we do these things, we'll find out that we'll become better people and happier people. And really, I believe so much in being, in living a happy life. And the truth is that when you're happy with yourself, you'll be able to share the happiness with the people around you. So please invest in yourself so that you'll be that person you want to be. Thank you so much.